Believe it or not, the goal of this channel is not just to make fun of bad games. I'm just incredibly curious about games that go under the radar. And since there are more bad games than good, the games that go under the radar are typically bad. Occasionally I find some hidden gems like say Necrovision, Dead Effect 2 VR, and Vertigo Remastered, which is a game I will cover very soon, I cannot stress how good this game is, but every once in a while a game so notoriously bad gets recommended to be so much that I can no longer ignore it. I'm stuck. I, I cannot move. Like, oh he's standing inside, what the f- And that's where we are today. Hey everyone, as always, Jarek here. And before I can even review this game, I have to explain the journey I went through just to get a copy. That copy, as you probably have noticed, is not a PC version, it's on the Xbox 360, and there's a reason for this. Now the PC version only came out in Europe, which is weird, but not really a big deal. Once something is on the internet, it is on the internet forever. So I went to myabandonware.com, I downloaded a version of Hour of Victory, Installed it on my PC, it even came with a no CD crack, which does not change the game in any way whatsoever, it just lets you launch the game without a CD being inserted in your computer. The game booted up to the main menu, and it doesn't work. The game tells you to press enter, but when you press enter, it makes a noise, and nothing happens, no matter how much you press the button. The culprit in this case is the bane of many gamers back in the late 2000s, Games for Windows Live. What's supposed to happen here is the Games for Windows Live thing is supposed to slide down from the top, but considering Games for Windows Live no longer works anymore, and this game didn't get any official patch for it to continue working after Games for Windows Live got shut down, and there's no community workaround for it because no one should ever care about this game and nobody does, you just can't play this game on PC. It is firmly busted. So with the PC version not being an option, I had to resort to the Xbox 360 release. Now the 360 version did get a release outside of Europe. It released in Europe, North America, and Australia. So I figured it shouldn't be that hard to find a copy and holy shit, nope. While it would be an incredibly interesting video to cover, I don't think it would be worth 80 to $130 to find a copy of a game I will play once and then shelve in my closet and never want to look at ever again. I looked at GameStop, they didn't have a copy both locally or online. So I did some more digging and I found a website called Yellow Dog Discs where it was only $6. Shipping was only like $3 too, so overall it was like $9.24. Pretty good deal. Judging by this website, it's either some hole in the wall place or a scam. If it was a scam, then, oh well, it was only 10 bucks. Thankfully, I got my copy in under a week, so would highly recommend. Great place. I actually love supporting small hole in the wall places. It's pretty cool to step in and see what they're doing if you walk by one of them. But yeah, the box is in pretty good tact. The disc didn't have any scratches. It comes with a manual, even has a midway registration card. Overall, would recommend. Would recommend Yellow Dog Discs, not this game. If any of you know who they are, please direct them to this video. I'm sure they'd like to see it. So we finally got our copy of Hour of Victory. Was it worth it? Well, judging off Metacritic, God no. Hour of victory, more like hour of agony, ah. Yeah, this person is not lying. I quite literally have nothing positive to say about this game. The best I can say about this game is that it's playable. Don't quote me on that. Let's start with the graphics, and my god, this game runs terribly. This has to be the worst performance out of any 360 game I've ever seen. And it's not even a late 360 game. This came out in 2007. There's an excuse for games that came out late in the 360's lifespan when the hardware was incredibly outdated, but no, this was a year after the 360 launched. This was the same year of the Orange Box, Halo 3, Bioshock, Call of Duty 4, even lesser known games that are still pretty decent like Time Shift. 2007 really was a fantastic year for first person shooters, this game did not help itself. As much as I like the dog on consoles, 2007 was a pretty good time to own an Xbox 360, and the hardware wasn't that outdated yet. So how in the world this game runs like this, I have no idea. And unfortunately, since we are playing on consoles, we can't really fix the typical 360 experience we get. 720p, frame rate that stays in the teens half the time, and an FOV that's just hideous. Look at this! This FOV is so small that I can hardly even see the magazine of this Sten. The graphics themselves are ugly as all hell, even for a console game. Wow, look at these textures. But I think what really shows it off are the cutscenes. Look at these top tier animations. At least the frame rate's holding up here. 
you know, baby steps. So they were speaking Russian a moment ago, now they're speaking English. What is this cutscene? It's so bad. It's just laughable. But I really, really have to emphasize the frame rate is going to be your worst enemy. It's supposed to run at 30 FPS, but like I said, it's frequently going to be running in the teens. This is going to be your average frame per second. This isn't just a one-off case where something gets too much on the screen and your frame rate drops. No, it runs like this the whole game. It does get worse later on in the game. I don't know if they had less time to polish that out, not that the beginning of the game is any more polished, or if there's just more happening. I think there's just more happening. But my goodness, this game looks bad, and there's no excuse for it to run as bad as it does. Oh, also, this is a World War II game that's rated T14. How can you have a World War II game without blood? And then there's the music. Every level has its own song, and on every level it's the same 30 second loop played over and over and over again, to the point of where my Twitch chat was begging me, pleading me to turn the music off. At the time I said, nope, we gotta get the original experience, but only later did I realize that you can't even turn the music off. You have to suffer listening to this. On a vaguely related tangent, the controls are just as awful. Now the button mapping is mostly normal, although I had to get used to the fact that left trigger was the throw grenade and aim was pushed down on the right analog stick. Normal for Halo, but for a game that's more like Call of Duty, I had to readjust. That's all fine though. The bigger problem is that the aiming is awful. Surprisingly, the closest aiming I can come up with is Halo 5. When you turn and look left and right, your aim starts slow and then suddenly switches to a faster aiming speed. Halo 5 did something very similar and I hated it then too. But that's not really the big problem. You can get used to this. The big problem is how awful the aim assist is. It's so strong for no reason. Your aim slows down when you get anywhere near the enemy. You aren't even aiming your crosshair over the enemy yet and your aim slows down so drastically that it becomes a hindrance. It's genuinely more difficult to shoot the enemy with aim assist on than off. Typically when it comes to explaining bad controls, it's almost impossible without handing someone a controller, but in this case you can see it with your eyes, you don't even need to. I found the best option in this game was to not even bother aiming and just use an SMG and spray from the hip. It was pretty effective, honestly. Next we'll talk about the story, and in a very similar fashion to a lot of other bad games, I have no idea what's going on. Like, obviously World War II is happening, Germans are bad, we, we get that. But stuff just happens around you that makes no sense. The cutscenes are all spectacle, very poorly animated spectacle, but spectacle nonetheless. However, they don't really give you any more context. They don't tell you who the enemies are, why you're fighting this battle, what your main goal is. At least not until literally the final boss of the game where there's suddenly an evil villain of a boss. I have no idea where this guy came from. Hell, looking at the Wikipedia page, there isn't even a story section. Like, there's just no story in this game. It makes no sense. My chat was constantly making fun of the voice acting. It's bad, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's some of the worst I've ever heard. It's just below average. And there have your principles got you. Behind enemy lines. On your own. Following other men's orders. About that gun. Go on, pick it up. Try it. And you have an excellent good night. No! And so we move to the gameplay, and this is where shit really starts going down. This game's incredibly simple when it comes to a World War II shooter. If you've played one, you probably played them all. And this one is almost no different. It's incredibly linear. You walk through a door, enemies predictably start spawning in, you keep going. Typically, there's a clown closet problem and you have to get to a certain point for the enemies to stop spawning. However, these enemies are so goddamn stupid that you can kind of just run by them and get to the objective and then they despawn. In fact, later on in the game, I was so sick of playing this game, even though it's only like two to three hours long, that I just ran by the enemies and stopped caring. All right, let's see if I can actually just do this. Let's see. Gonna ignore all the enemies and just sprint through them, see what happens. See how badly my frame rate explodes. I, it legit did not matter. See, I, I just run through, oh wait. 
Did it not count? That's still the objective is still right there. They all disappeared though. They're not on the radar anymore. Yeah, no. I ran by them, they despawn, then you go back. And it spawns the next ones. I really cannot stress how stupid the AI is. Now they did try to add something that's a little different than other games. In fact, the only other time I remember seeing something like this is the original kill zone. You have the choice between three different characters. The first character encourages you to just go all guns blazing. He gets more health and can take more bullets. The second character is a sniper character and the third character is a stealth character. Yes, there are stealth mechanics in this game, no, they don't go anywhere. The AI is so dumb that they'll just ignore dead bodies on the ground or not even see you standing in front of them. The stealth character gets a suppressed sten and a knife, but it really does not matter whether you're going loud or not. There's no punishment for failing stealth, so just shoot anyone anyway. Despite this, they still tried to add in something a little more. If you notice the compass in the bottom left, you can tell whether or not you're making noise. It also tells you whether or not enemies are alerted. I didn't notice this for the longest time because it's so irrelevant. Now, before every mission, you usually get the choice to choose between different characters, but occasionally you'll be forced to use one of these characters and it's fine because they all play the same. The only difference between these characters is that you'll get access to different routes on the linear maps. But the maps are so linear, they're not even different routes. All they really are is you unlock this fence so you can go around the enemy. It's just a different flanking route. Or the sniper will get a rope to climb on top of a building to snipe. Or the first character can push something out of the way. Like, there's not really a difference between them. It doesn't change the game. So in the end of the day, you have no reason not to choose the first character because he has more health than the other ones. The other thing they tried to change for no reason whatsoever is how health regenerates. Yeah, you do have regenerating health. You've seen that plenty of times before. But your health only regenerates, get this, when you're standing still. Why? This makes the game so much slower and a lot more annoying. Anyway, as I started saying earlier, these missions are all basically the same. You get an objective that's at the end of whatever map you're on, you run through the enemies to that objective, and then you continue or the level just ends. The only common variation of that is when you have to stop and defend a certain point, which I always hate when these show up because it means I have to play this game for longer. I just want to get to the end of this game. So yeah, nothing different or special in any way here. Occasionally, the game will throw something different at you, like you need to put a satchel charge on something or you need to blow up some tanks with a bazooka. Again, not huge changes. The only big change is a tank mission. I didn't have too hard of a time with this tank mission, but the controls are just so clunky. Now, it controls like the tank in, say, Halo would, but it just feels so off. Also, the tank shots fire incredibly slowly. I've heard this mission doesn't have any checkpoints, but I didn't die in this mission, so I didn't have a hard time. If I did and I had to do all that shit over again, I probably would have been pretty pissed off. There were really only two times where I got stuck in this game. The first one happened really early on. You have to get on AA and shoot planes down. If they blow up three radio towers, you die for seemingly no reason whatsoever. And while all of this is happening, there are enemies on the ground also shooting at you. They give you friendly AI to help you along, but they're so useless that you'll die from one of the two things. Eventually, you shoot enough planes to where the game decides you can continue. This part was just really annoying. Wow, what the heck? What? 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 I killed it! What got rid of it? I'm so confused! But the real head scratcher I want to talk about is the final boss. So apparently on the final vision, you're tracking down this one dude. I don't know why, I don't know who he is, I don't really care, I just want to beat the game. When you finally do track him down, you all stare at him doing absolutely nothing and dare him to pick up a pistol so you can shoot him, but you're supposed to take him in alive. And then suddenly the wall blows up, everyone else is gone but you, and you had to fight him. Ain't that some stupid shit? I was just right there and he was detained and couldn't do anything. I hate it when games do this crap. Even though it's portrayed in this cutscene that he could die from one bullet, suddenly he could take two million bullets and become German Superman. This is a hallmark of a bad video game. When bosses have no reason to have big health bars, but they suddenly do. This doesn't happen at any other point in the game. Everyone else dies in one or two bullets. Not this guy though. Also, he really does have superpowers because he just teleports from one side of the map to the other over and over again. You are just going to run back and forth shooting at this guy while there's also a tank outside and a bunch of other enemies shooting at you. And you have no cover, at least not any real cover that helps you. I have no idea what they were thinking with this boss. It gives you major Soldier of Fortune payback vibes. Except in that game, you could just cheese it by knifing him. In this game, you can't do that. I died quite a few times here, got curious, looked at a long play, and I saw him doing this, running back and forth, shooting at enemies for 10 minutes straight before winning. At this point, I said, screw this, just watch the long play, and that's what I consider beating the game. You know what we're gonna do here? 
fuck this game, we don't need to beat the boss, let's watch a playthrough, and that's it. I ain't playing with this shit, not fucking worth my time. Because it's the same thing, he goes back and forth and just shoots him over and over and over again. And he picks up more ammo, and that's it. And he's been doing this for, like, for a good ten minutes. Like, a hallmark, a trademark of a bad game is when they do this shit. They make a villain, he looks totally normal, he has no armor, there's no reason for him to survive more than one bullet, and he has, like, 9999 HP. For no reason whatsoever. He didn't even shoot him, he just kinda died. Okay. And keep in mind, in the cutscene just before this, they were all contemplating about shooting him, and he would have died in one shot. Let's see, let's see the payoff for that. That's just the whole game! You just win, that's your payoff. You get a cutscene of him laying on the ground. <laughs> what the fuck? What is that bullshit? I'm so glad I'm not bothering with that. Oh lord. I was not kidding when I said this game has no redeeming qualities other than it's playable. If I had to give it a score, it would be a 1.5 or a 2 out of 10. It is one of the worst games I've ever played. Is it the worst game? No, I don't think so. I think something like Hunt Down the Freeman You fucked up my face. Or Exodus of the Earth Is it really so easy? Is worse, but they're all solidly F'd here. So yeah, this game is definitely hours of agony. I want to give a big thanks to everyone over on Twitch that joined me because it was a lot more fun shooting the shit about Pokemon in Twitch chat than it was playing this game. I mean, that's what I was doing for most of the stream. Most of the time I wasn't even caring about the game because it was just monotonous and bad. If you want to join me in the future, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash Jarek or Gaming Dragon. Again, big thanks to those who showed up in my last stream. If you subscribe, you get to see my videos like a week ahead of time, so it's pretty early viewing. And of course, I want to thank all of you guys. Even if you don't join me on Twitch, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.